knowledge and value to your team. I agree. It's a no-risk move whatsoever. So Element starting this one off on the blue side. They will ban the Nidalee away, and Kasten is taken off the board by Meet Your Makers. Okay, I like how they target Horo and one of the few champions he maybe would be able to carry a game on. We have seen Nidalee players take over the early game, so not really any surprise here. And it's fun when you watch Elements. They normally always like to early pick their top laner. Like nearly all the games they play, they go first pick top laner or at least a flex pick. And then obviously they try and wait with their last pick for Froggen in this mid lane so he can get a, get a counter pick for himself. I want to see if they're going to do the same. I mean, Lissandra is the obvious first choice for Kevin. He looked great last week on it against Giants. Yeah, I think your maker's already feeling the Crepo threat. Ban away. True. The Thresh. He was also a fairly big Morgana player. Played some Braum last year too. So Crepo, of course, is known for his Thresh. Always been one of his main champions. But I don't feel like you have to ban it away. There are plenty of other supports he can play, and now Ringa would be open for Shook, a champion he's been looking great on. And again, if you first pick Lissandra, you take Rengar a second, or then at least you force MYM to take the Rengar, and you have like a Jarvan coming in for Shook, and you can be perfectly happy. So I'm not really sure I like that Thresh ban from Crepo. There's plenty of other supports he can play. I, I agree with you there, and what is sort of strange is that Meet Your Makers, up until about a week ago, they were having a very solid pick and ban phase. If not Lissandra. the rest of the game, there's Lissandra ban. That makes some sense there. I like that. Um, and the really big question here for Elements, too, is not necessarily Crepo, but how is Kevin going to perform? Because he's yeah. been a little back and forth since his debut. Yeah, it, very tough situation for, for Kevin. Barely played the game after failing to qualify with Millennium to the expansion tournament, actually. So we're going a few months back here. Play a little bit of solo queue. Suddenly, Elements just pick him up straight into the LCS again. So obviously, he needed a bit of time. I think he still needs more time to really to adapt to the new meta and get back to the top level we used to see Kevin play on. Just go like one year back for Millennium, mm -hmm. at least. Well, yet to see what he's going to play. The Ari is already locked in. As you mentioned, they like to pick that one up quick. Meet your fingers. <laughs> Actually, the opposite here. Yeah. Normally, they would first pick, or let me last pick the mid lane. Uh, front, but in yeah. this case here, yeah, a lot of their, what we normally consider first pick worthy picks, like the Rek'Sai, like the Lissandra Castellan being taken away. So it's a fairly safe one, and we know Ari can lane into nearly everything. Only Lissand or sorry, LeBlanc can be a bit of a tricky matchup, and that was obviously banned away by Elements. Yeah, and uh, the Callista becoming ever so popular here as Elements picks that one up for Reckless. They also take the Maokai, and this is starting to look like one of those winning comps that we saw from today. I mean, just so many, so much damage between an AD carry and a mid laner, and if they can fill it out with some very heavy protection, which the Maokai makes a good start for, yeah, they can be set up for some greatness. On the other side, meet your makers. They grab the Morgana. I early on, this early on, I want to say that's another Crepo denial. And then Horo is on the Jarvan this time, and they're thinking about what else they want to pick up next. I do like their Jarvan pickup at least with Rek'Sai in Italy being banned, so two target bans on him. Forcing him on Jarwin. Still a fantastic jungler early on. Not really much to be said there on the side of MOM. But I just. I normally like MOM in pick and bands because they have some good comps. They just don't really know how to play with these comps in, in the game itself. There's clearly lack of communication on the team's teamwork. And it's been a, a tough season, season for them. And there's been so many problems overall. So I can't even blame them for not really knowing how to play as a team at this point. Uh, we'll see if that does change. You've got the Fizz lock in as well as the Graves. I haven't seen a lot of Graves a fist today. Top lane. It's, kinda, oh, yep, yep, it's gonna yep, be a yep. Fizz top lane um, into Maokai. It's a fairly good matchup, especially once you complete your first item on the Fizz, Trinity Force. It can also be a blade if you want that straight away, but I do normally prefer Trinity Force so you have a bit more team fighting power around the mid game, but he was disabled, at least last week I believe it was. Now he's back here as this AD Bruiser. Fist top end. So it's not the AP anymore, it's been nerfed a bit too much to be viable. Mm -hmm. So again, we continue this trend of them having a fairly strong pickups to deal with the lane matchups, but then the execution right. is just not necessarily there. I mean, this is going to be a tough order against Elements. Even as they've been on a slide, this is still a very, very tough course, thing to face down. Of course, but I like what MOM is doing. Just picking very, very strong skirmish champions who can make plays. Oh, we're going to have the Ballista coming oh in. Oh, boy. From Elements. We in haven't seen case. this in Europe yet. No. Nope. Been played in NA at least hey by man, double Hey, bringing that NA flavor over yeah, here. Yeah, for sure. For they sure. are so loving this. If people don't know what the Ballista is, it's basically where you have Kalista Blitzcrank together. Blitzcrank goes in, he hooks a target, and then you pull him back with your ulti on the Kalista, and the target like travels double the, the distance now, and you can just 
I mean, you can, you can make some sick plays. And it's a it's, big yoink. There's a, it's very hard for the other team to, uh, this to is really confident. do anything. But there is, this is yeah, there me. is, uh, of course, their black shield coming in from Morgana, which normally would mm -hmm. make it very, very difficult for Blitzcrank to, to create the, the plays. Yeah, and Meteor Makers here with this, with this Leona Hover, they're actually thinking about possibly sending the Morgana top. Hmm. Or, you know, we could even could see a Morgana too, mid yeah. if we want to talk about the Fizz going top again. They have options, is I the point. I mean, okay, so Corey used to be a massive Fizz player. So he could play it, but it's been it's been nerfed pretty heavily. You more or less just rely on your ulti and your E now to like burst down targets, but they are gonna do it. So we have to it. see now if it's gonna be Morgana in the mid lane or top lane. I mean, there's still some flex picking going on here from MYM and we can talk about the comp once we see they've actually swapped around if they do it. That's or true. Not. So so back over to Elements here. We've got the Ballista lane, we've got the Maokai, we've got the Lee Sin. There is a lot of protection here and a lot of chase that Elements can bring and so many wombo combo possibilities. Yeah. A team like Elements is so individually skilled in every role. I feel like th this is the team that can make this comp work. It's a fantastic single target burst comp coming from them. Get a few stacks of red from the Kalista onto one target. The Ari obviously charm, combo everything. And then you have the bitch grind to, to sing, like, single out the target and lock them down with the macro. So fantastic pick composition, which still works really well in a team fight with the right setup so the bitch grind can actually see who is coming near him and he can land the hook. Because Blitzcrank always had that problem. If he fell behind and the enemy team started like grouping on your tower, it's very, very easy for the enemy team to see the Blitzcrank and when the hook is going to come and you just dodge around it or you black shield it. In this case, by the way, it is going to be Morgana mid lane, mm -hmm. as we said. And then, of course, the AD Fizz, uh, Trinity Force Blade, most likely, from a JWoww top lane into this Maokai. So on the side of MYM, we're going to see a lot of focus on splitting up Skirmish fights, especially that one-on-one -on -one in the top lane, is going to be important. This fist needs to go huge for JWoww if MYM wants to win. Oh, yes, indeed. Now, with those picks and bans locked in, let us know with, uh, yeah, which team you think <laughs> is going to turn it around. Other than I'm still reeling from this one. Tweet us our hashtags, Lwin or MYM win at LOL Esports. Let us know what you think. But the crowd is amped, and it is the first match, the debut of El Crepo. Yeah, he's back in Europe, and funny enough. We get him again, and he's having a blast on that Blitzcrank to start this one off. All right, so again, of course, when you have a Blitzcrank here, it's so much about map movement and early vision control because you can create so many picks basically on your own. Just by invading into the enemy jungle, you apply pressure on the two lanes next to you because you can never disrespect the Blitzcrank walking into your lane, landing a hook, and then suddenly you have to flash away and you're now forced to sit under your tower. Mm -hmm. You have to think MYM's gonna, gonna respect this. They are looking to set up for the lane swap up top. JWoww's still hanging there as well. And there's actually a line of scrimmage start for Elements, so they're not taking their chances just yet, but still very early on. Let's see what they do. So lane swapping against the Blitz. That's normally what every Blitz player in the world loves because this allows him to roam now, and especially grouped up with a Lee Sin. That's a fantastic combo. Land one hook and you will get a kill nearly everywhere. So Elements are not going to be too un unhappy about this one. But they will do Crooks. Crepo is a massive fan of the level two power spike, especially also when you have a Kalista. Mm -hmm. And then you go in with your Relic Shield, you kind of surprise the enemy. You always last hit the caster minions with the Relic Shield. So you get, boom, level two, you go all in. But uh, we won't be get to. Uh, we won't see that in this game here, seeing as we have the lane swap. Yeah. Speaking of abusing the level too, too. That's something that Krepp has been extremely vocal about. Just the moment you get that, and boom, you want to go dive somebody. And if you're dealing with the lane swap situation, it might even be better for MYM to just not deal with that right away because True. you know Jay Wow, he's looking to be doing the jungle buddy system with Horo. It's a little bit surprising because Leona Graves is fine, and they can do the Grump easier than you can do Crooks because Grump is a, is obviously easy, easier to take down than the two targets. So they would be able to do the camp as well and go down and take that push against the Blitzcrank and their Kalista. And if you get your level two first on a Graves Leona combo, you will engage instantly and you will force a flash from either the Blitzcrank or the Kalista. So MYM just playing it completely safe instead. And this can also be because Fizz, or because they were expecting elements to be on the top side to lane swap on the fist because normally fist is super super weak in a, in a swap he has no ability to farm he's fairly easy to dive even because yes he can jump with the trickster but he's not going to return any damage to cc to you so this is really going to backfire for mym i'm not sure again if they were predicting elements to swap against the fist in case they were well now jwow is in a pretty tricky situation not so wow 
Indeed. Not so well. Fast indeed. pushing this one elements on the bottom. Kevin should be perfectly fine to deal with this dual lane up top. He's gonna throw down the sapling. It's gonna go ahead and chase him down Rales for just a second. So even though we might get denied some CS here, Nisbet can still get a jump on him. Still, Avani champion. You, Maokai is definitely not the the unhealthiest to deal with this. Now Krepel, level as two you Rome. mentioned, on the Rome. Of course, just get it level two. Got the camp as well, level one. Corey has to respect it. Get an early ward and also just back away after actually pushing down this mid lane first. But you know there's such a high chance of this support roaming up as soon as he leaves the lane. So yeah, smart play by Corey at least getting down the ward. And now MYM trying to do the same onto Kevin here. Actually a five man dive. The wave hasn't having to push down. And Kevin is already level three. So he's not exactly an easy target to dive. Yeah, JWL is still roaming with Horror here. They take down the Scuttle Crab, but they're not really getting much for their efforts right about now. Ral is trying to freeze the wave with the help of Nisbeth away from Kevin, but at least he's in lane. He's in lane, but I do think this is the right call by MYM. They didn't get the freeze early on, and as soon as Kevin showed himself, he got the level two from the camp, as we always see with the, with the Maokai. And then you would know, okay, diving him is too risky because he's going to get level 3, maybe even level 4, because uh, before we are in a position to dive him. So let's just freeze the, the wave after. I, I do feel like that was a good call by them and not risking any, uh, any dives. But they need to get some farm on Jay. Wow, he's only been getting some jungle camps, and this wave is not going anywhere. So he's not going to get any farm down here either. Yeah, not anytime soon. Reckless, this plays right into his hand. He loves to get the farm game going off and early. Doesn't really need too much help in the form of Krep, who's making his way up top, actually, to help out Kevin. Might see some action coming out there in just a moment. Sentinel's out, too, to scout out any Fizz sneakiness. But Horo actually coming with Wow. still. The buddy system has not ended. No, but this is a good call again by MYM. You have to send down your jungler when the wave is being frozen like this, and you don't know who's standing there trying to zone. Had Krebel stayed in the bottom lane, it would have been a 2-2. Two and two. And again, you can still push it out and reset the wave on the tower so it bounces back. And obviously, we see the vote here. How about that fan vote? Yeah, 89%. Oh, no. real surprise. Well, how much of that is Krebel bump? Uh, well, I mean... Still very probably popular lot, team. Probably a lot. Yes. And also MYM is not exactly the team you would they're, vote they're for in, at they're, the they're in some trouble right now. It's yeah. definitely not the uh, not the favorite in terms of who you would expect to come out in this game. But you know, see if they have something to prove here. So far, as you mentioned, some smart moves. They haven't really been able to get anything on the map for it just yet. No, Rex is level 5 to only level 3 in this fist here. So this lane... Again, it's very easy for Reckless to control, but JWoww did manage to get it pushed into the Tower of Elements with the help of Horo. Reset the whole thing, so now you can see he's actually pushing towards him, and he can finally start picking up some farm points. He's been heavily delayed for himself, and you are you're looking often towards his Trinity Spike on the AD Fist. That's going to be delayed for him now. Yeah, he's really just sitting on the Longsword and the Flask, of course. Really not able to get much. 12 CS to his name. Not too far behind Kevin, who's been pushed back time and again by Rollins and Nisbeth. And this was why I like the freeze in the top lane from MOM, realizing, okay, we can't dive the Maokai, and if we just keep pushing in the wave, yes, we might take the tower, but he's going to get free farm or free XP, and he's going to be so far ahead of our top laner, who is very important in this comp, because if JWoww isn't stronger than Kevin in a split push, well, then he's not really going to add anything, because the Maokai is going to be a lot better in team fights. So for MYM here, I like how they said, we're not going to get an early tower, we're just going to try and deny this Maokai as much as we can, because it's going to be very important that JWoww can be a carry. Krepo tries the hook, doesn't land on Nisbet. JWoww, though, still level 4, so is Nisbet. Krepo might be 4, but Reckless has got that level 6 himself. He's got the Fates Call available if they want to do something cheeky. Froggen, meanwhile, walks into a Dark Binding. We haven't really talked much about this mid lane. With all the Krepo hype, it's been pretty silent as well. The Morgana lane for Cory, staying safe. Yeah, not often uh, Morgana creates a lot of action in the laning phase. It's true. Krepo, he's, he's going to charge in. Oh, he Hora. gets the pole. Horo. Here comes Shook as well. They're That's going to the down. Follow? Flag and Dragon. First blood. It goes over to Shook. One, two, three. We talked about it again. The roam you can do with the Blitzcrank here. As soon as you leave the lane, enemy team have to respect that you can show up. And we saw Shook as well. Follow him. Easy setup. Connect the first Q, wait for the Jarvis to jump over the wall, and then you just fly with the second charge, and you get the kill. So nice little setup here. Beautiful roam. They can do it again, because it's a fist sitting in the bottom lane, and Reckless has full control of it. Man, that's the sound the crowd makes when there's a first blood. I want to hear what it sounds like when the player war. <laughs> or when Krebo gets a pentacle. Oh. Whoa, man. Spoilers. It's coming later. Yeah, About we'll 10 see. minutes time. We'll okay. All right, I'll hold you to that. So Horo... 
did everything it could to get out of that situation. Really good tag teaming by Shook and Crepo. Really, really well played there. But uh, overall, they are still staying relatively safe. But they're down a, a thousand and a half gold here. Just, they're not really been creating a whole lot of opportunities for themselves at the start of this game. And you can see that farm differential starting to yeah. scale between the top laners. Kevin's got 41 to the 20 of JWoww, who's just been so pushed back. Jay, uh, well, uh, Kevin could just stay in the top lane, keep farming. JWoww had to recall, run all the way there. He saved his teleport for the potential dragon fight coming. Because if you look at the comp from MYM and in terms of like the scaling, Great is a mid game AD carry, or early to mid game. Morgana as well, very, very strong in the mid game stages, but late game her damage starts becoming pretty unreliable because you gotta connect the binding and the full combo with your ulti. And that's if you look at the mobility of a Kalista and an Ari, it's not often you're gonna get that second stun from the Morgana ulti. And that means mid game wise is where MYM needs to be able to pull ahead in this case. Otherwise, this, ja oh, sorry, this Maokai as well, late game, and the Ari is just gonna outscale you completely and then they won't be able to win. So that's why JWoww is saving the teleport so he can join for a potential fight. Indeed he is. Way I'm not looking to set anything up just yet though. They've got it in their back pocket. Reckless and Crepo now have the 2v2 fairly even in the farm game. But they're not getting close enough for a Zenith Blade so Nisbeth is going to not be happy too much about that one. Reckless going for Blade. This is one of the games where I like it. Often we see, we see a lot of European players go for Blade, but in other regions, as a first item, it's very rare, honestly. But in this case, because it's going to be so much about MYM looking for these like one-on-one, -on -one, two and three kills in, in, in fights and like spread it out a little bit, I, I quite like it to dodge around, especially because of Fist as well. Once he jumps in at you, if you Blade him, you can kite him around with this Kalista here and avoid him one Because remember, AD Bruce of Fist is no longer about like the burst you can do. It's about keep hitting a target over and over with the W, the changes, so you do that percent damage on every hit. So if a Kalista can just jump away from Fist and he only gets one or two hits, well, then she's never going to die. Mm -hmm. Reckless Crepo still playing it safe down on this bottom side, but they've got some backup from Shook. Both there is the hook. Oh, they're going to Ballista it up. Nisbeth now is going to land his Solar Flare, but they're right back at it. The heal is burned. So they get themselves a summoner and... <laughs> Well, it looked a lot cooler than it, 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 it was. It was kind of like, whoop, well, that was sudden. Yeah, so Horus showed himself. Everyone decided to back away. Yeah, no. That no, was no, the ballista for anyone who has yes. never seen it before. Okay, we might and see more. We will see more in this game, about that for sure. Deficio. Yeah, we'll get more of those. Not the pentacles, no, 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 the no. ballista. Well, don't hold anything off the table, but yeah. We've only seen it, uh, I believe, just the one time in NALCS. This time, it's come across the pond. So they do know how to execute the combo. We know that much. Yeah. First uh, little test has been completed in the Reckless Crepo synergy. And let's see for MYM. JY has been able to get back in this lane. He fell really far behind, but now he's had decent farm. Still delaying this Trinity Force a lot mm -hmm. for him. I mean, not even a Sheena Phage completed yet. And I'm curious to see what Kevin goes, because obviously Picks Up the Kettles has a few options. We saw that last game that the Righteous Glory was the choice. The ultra speedy, tanky Maokai. Ooh, Reckless finds a little bit of damage on to the back of Rales. Starts pushing this wave in. Yeah, so about the Maokai choices, in a lane swap, what we have seen in other regions now, especially in Korea, is if you get denied for a lot of farm on the Maokai, you go for the Catalyst first, just because it's such a good lane item in itself and for every single level up you get. And you don't necessarily go Rod of Ages instantly or Righteous Glory. You save it and you see how much gold you have on your next pack. And if you can afford a Rod of Ages and it's still fairly early, you complete it. Otherwise, you just start building Spirit Visage, Frozen Heart, that kind of route, and then you just go Righteous Glory later on in the game and you kind of skip the Rod of Ages part because it. It is a fairly slow item in terms of scaling, so you have to get it early on for it to be effective. Yeah, smart moves. So Kevin will have those options to him the longer this one goes on. Both the junglers gone with the Skirmisher Saber with the Warrior Enchant. Makes pretty good sense here. Both teams want to team fight. No one's tempted the Dragon. Twelve and a half minutes in, there's just a glimpse of it from Corey there. I would like to see MYM put a bit more focus on that Dragon you just mentioned here, and at least have a few more aggressive wards behind the dragon wall so they can see the likes of Shook now where he's standing. And that means once you group around that, you can look for a pick 
with their Morgana, land the binding, followed by, let's say, Leona, and suddenly you can actually get a very fast kill, and you can take a dragon from it. But they are they seem happy just sitting back and farming at the moment. We just saw Cory actually blow his ulti, so uh, no dragon. Nope, for MYM in the next few uh, Just a little bit more damage. Do the hook oh. in on Nisbeth. A little bit tanky. They get the kick back. They're going to look to Trey and make this a 2v2, but a pair of teleports coming on in. Crepo going to flash away, but he can't get out of the Cataclysm now. Reckless is here, and Horo over commit. Shook is going to get the pick onto him. Kevin, after the teleport, helps Reckless to take down Nisbeth. Two kills taken by Elements, and they are in prime position for this dragon. I'm really not sure why MYM were looking for some sort of fight here. You just use your ulti on the Morgana in the mid lane, so you knew there's going to be a potential roam or dragon fight. We see Froggen actually going for Cory. Yep, Cory's just diving around him and ignites burned either way. They don't quite have the spell rotations back up. Last charge of the Spirit Rush in there. Pretty close to even, but... Oh, Shook wants to go in Hello. and finish the job. No, he thinks uh, better of it. That was <laughs> really... Yeah, it didn't have all rash. Thing. I think also he had to uh, respect Cory's binding under the turret here for him, but uh, flashy plays from Elements. The hook first from Crepo. Teleport coming. Let's see it again. So remember, MYM here, they don't really want a team fight, especially not after this engage where Nisbet has been taking fairly low. Yes, Teleport comes in, and here's the nice little dancing. First, you dodge the ulti, and then you avoid the center plate from Nisbet as well as the ulti from JWoww. So everything being dodged by elements, and they still have that tower to protect them. And now they can just clean up the kills with Kevin teleporting in behind as well. Yeah. Really nice play set up in MYM. Tried to fight it. Could not. 3 0 is the score. JWoww, Kevin looking to make it a little bit more here forces him to get pushed back. Shook waiting in the wings. He has been quite across the map. 100% kill participation. Those three kills. There's the score line for you. And it's funny, whenever Shook plays Lee Sin and has a massive impact in the early game, elements always do well. Think again, Worlds. It's been mentioned a few times. Nigel White Shield, the perfect game. Yada, yada, yada. I guess people are pretty tired of that one. But still, that was Shook setting up the whole thing. And he's still one of the few junglers who likes to play Lee Sin. We see a lot of our junglers focus on different ones, more engaged focus. But he can still make some plays early on here. And of course, also credit to uh, the rest of the team. Yeah, Rengar They've been was able to pick up, up the kills. Yeah, again. Big band phase too, and he, he did prefer the Lee Sin over it. I think it fits into this comp quite well, though. Yeah, it does also. He needed maybe a bit more early game. Power. Rengar often wants his level 6, or we can say every time he wants that level 6 before he really starts impacting the map where Lee Sin now, can be active. Over. Unless you're Reynover, of course. But the Lee Sin can be active very early. And because MYM's comp is so much about using this early mid game to win the game, then the Lee Sin makes perfect sense. You know, you can miss or hit the minions as many times as you want on those hooks. It only takes one. And uh, you can see everyone getting a little antsy for that to happen. Jay Wow and Kevin still duking it out. And just another thing about Lee Sin, if you look at the comp from MYM, so much is going to be about Korra and his ulti in a fight. If he goes in and Black Shields himself, sure, you won't be able to kick him out. But then suddenly, Mr. Rallis is open and you can dive him and you can get a kill on him with the Maokai. You can lock him down very easily. So if Korra basically uses Black Shield on anyone else but himself, then he will get kicked out by uh, Shook every time. The ulti will be cancelled, more or less, and you will only get that one damage charge. And that's once again where we can see this Lee Sen pay off. Yeah, Jayla trying to bait this one out here. Comes the fish, here comes Horo. They're gonna dive onto him and juggle away the aggro with the playful trickster. There we go, MYM gets themselves a kill on the board. Good little move here by MYM. They will lose a lot of pressure oh. on the bottom side of the map though. Elements already moving into place a few wards. This bot lane tower is very low, but it is defended for now. And a good kill for Horo in the top lane. Remember, this fist needs to get going for MYM to win this game. One assist will certainly help him out just a little bit. Reckless and Crepo back together again on this bottom side. That tower is not looking too healthy for MYM. He should be able to peck it away as Crepo backs away. Okay. <laughs> not sure what that flag was. I really like the right, place this game here. He's just kind of like, am I, am I going <laughs> to juke you? Yeah, I am. Oh, Shook as well with that flash Q in the mid lane. And he's like, nope, not going to go for the it. The junglers are, are very uh, interesting to see. Yeah, showing off today. Yeah. Yes. Showing off. Showing off those... Uh, those Their mobility. They show what they can do on these champions. <laughs> anyway, classic start from Froggen. He always likes to go Abyssal Scepter in the lane. Gives him very, very good one-on-one -on -one trading potential. Hard to shut him down. And while the Fist is going to build AD items, there's still quite a lot of the damage, which is going to be magic. So in this case, it's going to be uh, twice as effective for Mr. Froggen. Indeed, it is Crepo Shook hanging around. They're making sure they're not spotted out, but Corey 
You know, I honestly feel like the Morgana itself was just a big telegraph that it was a safe pick. See how he's dodging out Froggen's Orb of Deception right there? And he's been playing very far back, not too far down on the CS either. No, again, I, I agree. I think it was just a very safe flex pick that can go top, mid, and, and support, so you don't really show anything. And Morgana has been a, a very strong pick in every single role, honestly. So, no, I don't feel like MYM did a mistake picking it. They just take a comp, which I normally would expect them to play because they have to. No matter basically what they do, they have to win early game for them to take a win because they're so far behind now, like 1-9 in the standings. Nothing really been working for them. So I do like the fact they run a bit of a snowball comp. It's just so hard for them to pull off. So not guaranteed to win, sadly. No, not guaranteed indeed. Got to play the game to win, Deficio. Jay, wow. Take a look at that top lane differential. About 500 or so gold separate him. He's got a little bit back for himself, but still, that early game really, really hurt him a lot. And Crepo, just no fear whatsoever. And Nisbeth was going in with the Zenith play. There's the Fates call, holding it, throwing it right there. Rales not taking quite so much damage, but Reckless gonna try for the outplay. Solar Flare does not go where they needed it. A very fast Kalista. And MYM backing off. Well, that was a fairly uh, risky trade by Elements. You saw Crepo walk into two waves of minions. Tanking them first, knowing of course there was the ulti from Reckless to pull him in. And managed to force MYM back, blow a few ultis, Nisbet completely missed his. It's so hard to land it on a Kalista, it's nearly impossible. But they, they trusted that they were going to be able to do it. There's another hook, they've caught Nisbet this time. Can he get away? He's got the flash, but so does Reckless. Over oh, the wall, not enough damage. There we go, Reckless on his second win. Finishes that one off. Another 30 gold in the pocket with the pink ward. And now the dragon's live, like clockwork elements. Moving to place. Oh, and the crowd is very, very happy. I like this from Elements. They're moving around the map. They're trying to create plays. Yes, you picked the Blitzcrank, so you have to do it. And it's working for them. Against MYM here, they're playing aggressive in the lanes. Only guy who's slightly in trouble is going to be Kevin up in this top lane. And Horror, he's going for another one. Slow. And he's steady. No, no, no. They know he's there. Elements, yeah, they, they're so much more proactive. I don't know how much of this necessarily is Crepo and how much of this is the lack of pressure that MYM is really generating on the map. But for either sure. way, yeah, yeah. it's working 100%. wonderfully for Elements 20 minutes into this game. Two Dragons, they've got themselves a 3,000 gold lead. They've got a tower to none. They're looking to push on a second one, and there's just no response from Meteor Makers. Yeah, now, now's the real test really for Elements here. How fast can they actually close the game itself? Because when they played Giants, they had the same kind of lead early on. It looked fantastic. We were praising Kevin for really having a big impact in the game. And then they end up Basically sitting back and just waiting. Got to 40 minutes, started a Baron, they didn't have to. It was stolen by Frederick. And then Giants walked down and won the game right after. So it looked so good. And then suddenly everything just went completely, uh, I want to say a wrong word here, so I'm not going to say it instead, but it just... Upside down. Yeah, upside down for, for Elements. So now we got to see if they can close this game Yeah. against MYM. Still, you see aggressive moves for them trying for the outplays, trusting it too. Honestly, I would not want to be up against Reckless and Crepo, especially on those two champions that they seem to be executing quite well on it. Reckless, two kills, zero deaths, one assist right now. Pings all across the top side. They look to take this outer turret. JWoww, got to beat a retreat. Can he get out of there? You know he cannot. Playful Trickster, but here comes Kevin, and Reckless picks up kill number three. Looks like a tower inbound too, boys. Just walk in, you land ulti to silence him. And then you hook him in for yourself, saving the trickster from JY at the start. And then in the end, Kevin shows up with a nice little power play by Elements, simply saying, we've already played the bottom lane. We push up the wave to the tops, to, to the tower as well in the bottom bottom side. So we know that someone is sitting there and farming, and we can just go four man top, and we will always be in a numbers advantage. Yeah, and immediately Kevin spends his teleport, goes down bot, saves the tower, and prevents Rallys from pushing the wave. More damage, a ton, onto this second tier top tier. Nisbet's the only one here to defend this, and they've still got Froggen pressuring the middle. Elements is controlling this map perfectly right now. Yeah, they're doing everything they are basically supposed to do. 5k gold lead this early, now they might be looking for more. Oh, oh, there we go. Always play around this deep vision here. As soon as you get a lead or you see an opening to walk inside the enemy jungle and place a few rewards, you should do it. And Elements here, look at the, look at the minimap. It's basically their jungle as well now. 
MYM is only owning their own lanes, and that's it. Oh yeah, they've annexed the entirety of that jungle away from them. They don't even own their they own lanes. They grabbed a tower. Yeah, they're, they're getting knocked down one by one. Four towers to zero now. Kevin chasing out Jay Wow. The rest of Elements are in hot pursuit. They got Nisbeth again! And the Zenith Blade, excuse me, the Solar Flare, doesn't do much of anything as Elements come up with another pick looking to take out a tower. And way I'm not even safe. Oh, yes, their lane is not safe in their sure. jungle. No, this one's going down easy. Just great play again by Elements, really using this lead to always roam in the enemy jungle. And when you have full vision control and they have to try and face check you to move between the lanes and defend, well, then it's so easy for Blitzcrank to just pull in targets left and right. And dinner is served, paid by Crepo. Yeah, they seem to be pretty happy with that one. 006, a Perfect support score right now. If you look at it with that kill participation, he's been involved in every single one of these element skirmishes. And your makers have been struggling to find any kind of recourse here. I mean, he's a yeah. massive gold lead for Elements at 23 minutes in. And for, for Medium Makers here, we looked at the schedule early on the Analyst days. We talked about how they basically <laughs> have to start picking up a few wins if they want to try and avoid number 10, which is the automatic relegation to the Challenger Series. And I looked at the Elements game and said, this might be one of the games they can win because Elements have had problems, have been inconsistent, they've been changing out players. That's one way you might be able to surprise if you get that early lead and just snowball the game. But it's not been the case at all here. Elements have basically been reading them like a book and just outplaying them throughout the entire stage or throughout the entire game. Completely. Completely agree on that point. Uh, Meet Your Makers, again, they had, a, they had a more or less good draft phase. It was a little bit strange in this situation now. JWoww is going to jump onto Kevin and try to make the outplay. They're even in levels, not so much in HP as JWoww pushes as far as he can, but there's still a very healthy turret there. They just don't have the map pressure to do anything to elements who are continually pushing them around. But this does show how MYM want to play the game. In this case here, with the fist split pushing, we see the blade also because the Trinity Boss was so delayed and he knew, okay, I'm gonna have to one-on-one -on -one this Maokai very soon. He just went straight for blade itself. And we see the power here. Kevin is not able to do anything. He has to walk away every single time. So if you just go like 20 minutes back in this game and MYM had gotten standard lanes, this could have been a completely different situation. In this case though, Elements have had a perfect setup for them, and they're looking for more. Crepo is pulling in oh, Horo. Holes in Horo. Shook has a chance to go in on the queue. Crepo Pull getting pulled out by the Fate's call. Question is, will they re-engage? Crepo thrown back into the action. MYM trying to back away from this one. Pressure exerted once again by Elements. MYM's actually caught in a bad spot. They are all clumped up here, and the cooldowns are not quite reset just yet, but they are going to be able to muscle their way back to their tower. So the first time we see MYM fight back just a little bit, Nobody ends up dying, and they got a disengage going for them. There's still a lot of ultis ready. JWAS will be up for this fight. So all the ultis for MYM for this fight here. Still, you don't have any wards pre-placed except for that one Rex is standing on. So once they get cleared by elements or they move into this small bush down here with the pink ward, then suddenly you you can't go in and face check because you're going to get hooked in by, by the Blitzcrank and nobody's tanky enough to survive that. No, you, you cannot afford to get pulled away from the team, but MYM, they're going to try and stop this dragon attempt right now. The Solar is going to land. Reckless a little isolated away. Froggen, though, immediately picking up Nisbeth Horo, focusing. Reckless is down. Rawlis is going to follow. It's a double kill going over to Froggen. Corey and Horo caught and kicked. Azania's Hourglass, but that won't keep him alive for long. Shook follows through. Corey's going down. Jay Wow, playful trickster to avoid the ace. Even though Reckless went down, that's another dragon for Elements. Another one, four kills as well. Fairly decent engage from MOM coming into this fight here, but they've just fallen so far behind and they were unable first to really lock down Reckless, so he stayed alive for a long, long time. You can just see the replay as well. Froggen managed to single out Mr. Rallis. Yeah, that was, again, just this textbook Elements was able to outplay, outfight, even though the angle of engage was great from MOM. They were, as you said, so far behind. They didn't have the items. They didn't have the sustainability. And it just kind of turned into getting picked off. Let's see it again. So remember we talked about how Corey with the black shield, it's going to be tough for him to find the right target. He's using it on himself, so he's not going to get kicked out by Shook. But that means his AD carry while well, he's dead already because Brogan just dives right at him, blows him up. No protection for him. You play, you play Leona as well. There's not enough peel to really save your AD carry in this case. And therefore, so elements can clean it up. Reckless did go down. This took a long time for MYM to kill him, and then you saw Rylus basically being dropped instantly. Yeah. At that point, it was all cleanup duty for Elements, so they grabbed themselves four kills for one. That third dragon on the board, the extra mobility will help them to continue to push MYM back. Skull of Crab 
soon to go down. Baron pit control over to Elements and the Vision to boot. I always have to remember when there's a Callista in the game, you can take some fairly, what we norm normally would call risky Barons, and you can still just build up enough stacks of Rind on it, and if the enemy team spots you and they try and stop you, it will most likely be too late. You got that insane amount of burst from the Callista itself. And we see now from Reckless, Hurricane was of course second item, QSS coming in, third one. Locking him down again is going to be nearly impossible. But he doesn't have too much AD build up for himself, so he needs a lot of hits in these team fights to pull off enough damage with the rent. And that's obviously one of the trade offs when you go for Blade Hurricane, is you rely on getting at least 10 to 12 stacks on a target before you can do some decent damage. Hasn't been a problem for him so far. 4 1 and 4 on that score line. And I think decent maybe is wrong. Let's say some great damage. There you go. Four members of Elements are pushing out and controlling this jungle yet again, just making sure they keep the vision game in their favor. Big wave pushing up top, and they've been able to let Kevin do his thing down bottom lane. He's more than a match for Wow at this point, even though it has been a couple of close shaves for Maokai. They, he stays alive as long as they need him to, and he's still got the teleport up and available, which Wow doesn't have, so they have that movement advantage on top of it. Yeah, they should just use it Bait around this Baron itself. You see the top wave has been pushing in for a while, set up by Elements, and they're just basically fighting over the vision in the jungle here. So they're saying to MYM, well, you can't defend your tower, you can't walk into your jungle, and you cannot face take a Baron itself, especially because you don't have that teleport you mentioned before. So it's just a perfect setup. Get a few hits on the tower, go back towards that Baron here. If anyone recalls and you see them recall, you can just start it. You have the Callista with the Rinse stack, and that Baron is yours. Yeah, wash, rinse, repeat. Elements, they, they love this type of strategy. Now they're hanging out, waiting to see if MYM are going to check for this Baron. They're taking so far the safe route. Krepo going to zoom on forward. Nisbeth is not going to get caught this time around. They got a little bit antsy. I think that one ward clear, but still, yes, you got into place a ward from MYM. Yes, you dodged the hook, but you're not here to defend your tower now. That one goes down, they're going for the fight. Yep, Shook is going to be able to safeguard his way back, but Horo, Nisbeth, they really want this fight, but he's going to get popped. Reckless coming up big. Shook a little bit low, ignited. They can't. Forced the fight, however, Krepo thrown in with the Vate Skull. Reckless still in the front, doing all the damage he can. Horo immediately bailing out, but he won't be able to get away. Two kills for none. Elements dangerously low on the health bars, but they come up with another two for none. And we see again from MYM here, they're looking for that engage onto Reckless. They got it, honestly, but he managed to once again jump away. Not enough follow up damage. Let's see it again. So Tau goes down. MYM has been forced to just run around this lane a few times. It's not to Shook, so not even Reckless. I'm not sure what I'm talking about here. And Froggen in the very end. It's going to be the first target. He survives. Nobody ends up dying. And here, well, it's just somewhat cleanup duty. Now for, for Reckless, all the engage ulties have been blown by MYM. And Reckless can dance around with all his attack speed. Yeah, they really just can't get away from that one at the very end. Froggen pops Horo. They did get a little bit low because of how caught up they were, but again, just so far ahead of Meteor Makers in this situation. It's 8,000 gold in the lead. Another Dragon's coming up in a minute and a half. Elements have the map pressure, have the team fights when they need them, and what does Meteor Makers have? Um, that's a great question. I'm not too sure, honestly, what MYM have or can do in this uh, case here. They need to keep looking for the for the engages. I think that's the right call for them. And you just gotta hope Elements misplace a team fight. Like if you do manage to lock down Froggen with your ulti from Nisbet, he doesn't have any defensive items completed yet. There's no Mikhail's coming in for, for Krepo yet either. So he can get locked down and you might be able to blow him up. But then you have to deal with the Callista after and you just blown all your CC on the Aries. So honestly, I'm not sure. I think MYM is doing what they can. I just don't think it's gonna be enough. Well, at this point, they certainly need all the help they can get. Scuttle Crab Shrine now taken by Elements. 30 seconds till that next dragon comes back on up. They meet your makers. Know that they have a dangerous task ahead to try and even contest this one. But Horo going to run right into a Blitzcrank hook. He's flashing away. He's flagging dragging away. And he'll get away. But that is going to expose the dragon. Another 15 seconds up. Can Horo get back as soon as he needs? I don't think so. Just uh, the power of warts here. For the people who normally don't watch, well, we can say solo queue people often don't really value getting all these wards down on the map before you set up an objective too much. 
And we just see this game is just a textbook of why playing around the vision on, on, on objectives, especially with the likes of, uh, of the Blitzcrank Ari, combo from elements, so much single target burst from them, it's just perfect because it makes it impossible for the other team to ever walk in around them if, as long as you're set up in time. Hey man, SK Gaming can take a few notes. It's going to be Reckless picking up this red buff. Big pop on the rend, and he backs away in style. So really just a, a fantastic game from Elements so far. Meet your makers, as you mentioned, they're trying to find these engages. They're trying to force a fight, but they've been getting outplayed consistently, and it's to the point where even if they get the perfect angle, it just seems like they don't come up with the kills. As soon as Froggen gets his uh, hourglass and the McKills is completed for Crepo, then it should be good night for MYM, because then they can't even catch anyone out of, contr uh, out of position. Sugar's fairly tanky. Well, that's a lie. Sugar's not very tanky, but he's not really the target you want. And obviously the Maokai is extremely tanky, meaning for Kevin that he's going to be more than fine being the guy you engage on. And if you go for Crepo, well, you have the ulti from Reckless to just pull him back in, and you don't really have any targets suddenly. Yeah, it's, it's a troubling mix here for Meet Your Makers. They have a few minutes now, though, before Froggen goes back and before Crepo goes back to the play side. There is that opening, but it has to be on the Ari, and that's the only way for him. Why. I feel like Elements could, instead of just baiting this Baron, just straight up go for it. They're pinging it out right now, just because you're strong enough at this point that you can bail off and still take a fight. And they want to bait MYM into a bad situation, but they're testing the waters first. And you know how risk-averse typically Elements are. This is playing it very safe, for sure, for them. Not starting the Baron, not risking a horror steal like Frederick did for Giants. And also not risking getting a caught in choke point, but Nisbet is going in it again. Yeah, they're going to try to force this one again. Nisbet's health bar, though, is rapidly melting down. The Fates call massive soul shackles, though it's only going to end up on Kevin and Shook. Meanwhile, JWoww getting popped in the back as they go in for another one. Raul is getting caught over deception back. Corey, his Zanyas is off, and Elements on the chase. Crepo may have gone down, but everyone from Meet Your Makers is in some serious trouble. Three members dead. And Elements looking to push up the middle. Again, they try to go for the engages this time onto Crepo and Shook. Again, two Tigers who can't really escape it, but you're not getting to the carries. Reckless managed to jump around. He has BT, he has QSS, Blade. He has so many items to peel for himself. That's why he went for that build as well. Not really much help coming in from the rest of his team. And he stayed alive. Oh. That's. Oh, my goodness. Be a surrender. Yeah, 35 minutes in. That is the surrender. And Elements, they stopped their losing skid in the debut of Crepo. Results in a win for Elements. Yeah, so it was against MYM, bottom of the standings, but still, there were some key points here for Elements that looked a lot better for them. Absolutely. The way they were roaming early on, the way they were always playing around the vision to set up these picks worked wonders for them. And breaking Smiles. the losing streak. Yeah, Smiles and, and relief on their faces. You can really tell. Crapo happy with that first result as they go over to shake hands with MYM. That's not the same Crepo we saw in the intro movie. No, I don't think so. What happened right there? Lost some weight. Got a little bit buffed. I Changed his jersey. I have a picture uh, on my desk of Crepo with no shirt on. We put it up on Twitter. Yes. That's, we had to print it out. We look at it every day. It's beautiful. It inspires us. <laughs> yes. Just like that performance. Good work, gentlemen. Froggen. Big smile on his face as the crowd is loving that result for sure. And MYM, another loss in the books for them. They just really never got it going. No. Again, they, they got caught in that lane swap, which they started. And you have a Fizz, who is a champion who gets really, really shut down if he's forced in a 2v1. So we never got to see J-Rock get rolling. He had the one fight with Kevin in the bottom lane where we saw the power of the pick. But it was just delayed so much, and the rest of the team was so far behind that, yeah, you might be able to one-on-one -on -one the Maokai, but he's just going to sit back and farm then at his own turret, and you're never really going to kill him. So. Well played by Elements. They used the advantage. They played the map really well. No hesitations at all. Of course, you played safe when you just lost the Baron last week to Giants. Yeah, I, I think, so I think I that's like justifiably risk adverse. They did what they should, so and it was a yeah. good performance. They didn't really need to, to really test the waters too far out there. So a, a good test run with Crepo. The Ballista lane worked out quite well. Not for the Wombo Combo ability, just because they were able to make the outplays. They were fine in the lane swap. They were fine in the 2v2 after the fact. And really, just every lane outclassed in that situation. I want to look um, at Kevin this game on the Maokai. 2-1-6. Uh, arguably wasn't challenged quite as much as he had been in previous weeks, but he's looking fairly solid on that tanky champion. He's, he's doing his job, and I think Elements probably looked at Kevin and said, you're not quite ready yet to play carry champions like Aurelia. He's a big Aurelia player, just like Wicked was. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why 
They most likely will focus on getting him on these tanks here, where he could be more of a supported role. And I think that's fine. It works for Copenhagen Wolves and Youngbox, so I think it's good here for Millimans. Yeah, worked out well for them as they pick up that win. Now, for a closer look at that match, we're going to go.